Welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry, and today I'm going to tell you the only three quarterbacks in the National Football League that I can see being the week one starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the start of next season. But before I reveal all three of these options for the black and gold, do me a favor right now, get in the comment section and answer this question and predict it. Who will be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers in week one of next season? Predict it for me down there in the comment section. And let me know who you think will be the uh, black and gold signal caller at the start of the 2024 season. So the first option here, and I do think this is the most likely option, whether uh, you like it or not, I think the number one option here is Kenny Pickett uh, because you take this kid in the first round a couple years back. Uh, he had Matt Canada as his offensive coordinator for all that time. And, you know, I just feel like a, a loyal organization uh, like the Pittsburgh Steelers that hung on to Matt Canada for one year too long uh, is going to want to give Kenny Pickett at least one more year to try and prove himself. This is what Ian Rappaport of NFL Network had to say about Kenny Pickett's future with the black and gold. My understanding is the organization does still believe in Kenny Pickett and does not want to move on from him after the season. Still a ton of confidence that he can be a franchise starter. Now, the case for Pickett uh, it does have some points that I understand, right? You still have three more years of contract control under Pickett's contract. All right, not only two more for sure seasons, but also uh, next uh, in the 2025 offseason, you can pick up that fifth year option in, and in total you could have three more years of affordable quarterback play. And if Pickett develops, that could be a real asset to this football team being able to hang on to the veterans that they currently have on this roster. Also, you can, he clearly has the support of the people in the locker room. Guys like him. He is a good leader. He works hard. He's a selfless kind of guy, uh, and he's somebody that's all about the team. So he's definitely somebody uh, that I think that, that his teammates would be supportive of bringing back next season. And also, you know, I think that sometimes it can take more than two years for a quarterback to really come into their own in the National Football League. All right, we've seen this time and time again in the National Football League with a number of examples. All right, Josh Allen took three years to become an MVP candidate there in Buffalo. All right, Tua Tungavailoa with the Dolphins also took three years. Remember, going into that third year there, Mike McDaniel's first year in 2022, people were going into that season saying Tua Tungavailoa was already a bust, just like they're saying about Kenny Pickett right now. Same thing goes for Jalen Hurts. I mean, just going back to last year, People were saying if he doesn't perform in 2022, his ass was going to be grass. Guess what? He was an MVP candidate, got his team to the Super Bowl. Now he's a bona fide franchise quarterback. And then Jordan Love had to sit three years behind Aaron Rodgers, finally got his shot this year, and now it seems like he is the guy there in Green Bay. So the argument that after just two seasons, you can't really fully evaluate Kenny Pickett is definitely a valid one. But the issue with that argument is this, all right, to play devil's advocate. Uh, I think that those other quarterbacks on that list, Josh Allen, guys like Tuatunga Vailoa, they showed high-end traits uh, in those years prior of that I just don't think Kenny Pickett possesses, right? Kenny Pickett doesn't have that rocket arm that Josh Allen has, or the rushing ability for that matter. I don't think Kenny Pickett has the mental processing that Tuatunga Vailoa has, right? I just don't, I don't think he has the accuracy on the deep ball that Jalen Hurts has. So, you know, he doesn't have these high-end traits that these guys have, and I definitely think when you mix that with some really bad film over these last two years, it's just not looking very good for Kenny Pickett's prospects to develop going into year three, no matter who the offensive coordinator is. So just over uh, his career so far, in 25 games played, 62.6 completion percentage, you know, it's okay, I guess, under 200 yards per game, not really good at all. Uh, touchdowns and interceptions, exactly the same. That is not what you want to see. He's been one of the worst red zone quarterbacks in the National Football League. That's a very, very bad sign because the windows are tighter uh, and all these different things, and that's really where quarterbacks make their money, and Kenny Pickett is the worst quarterback in the league in that area. The quarterback rating all the way down at 78.8, which is not good at all. And listen, I think that these numbers can be explained with some things that I see on film that are really tough to coach out of a player. So let's start with the pocket presence. We've all seen Kenny Pickett in a relatively clean pocket spin out of it like a million times, right? He loves that spin move out to his left, and it gets him in trouble all the time, right? So this is somebody, 
and Kenny Pickett that even going back to college would leave clean pockets after his first one or two reads because he's not comfortable sitting in the pocket and delivering. This is one of the reasons why Mason Rudolph has been so successful uh, in his relief because he actually stands in the pocket and keeps his eyes down the field, whereas Pickett gets skittish and tries to make plays outside of the pocket, which is not a sustainable way to play quarterback in this league, especially with his limited skill set. Then number two, the accuracy issues really came out this year for Kenny Pickett. It, it really did. You look at the accuracy numbers, both the catchable ball percentage and the on-target percentage, it's less than 32nd in the league this year among quarterbacks with at least 100 pass attempts, which is worse than backups, right? There's backups that have been more, quarter, uh, that have been more accurate than Kenny Pickett this season. This is something he definitely needs to fix because if you don't have a rocket arm, right, if you don't have this ability like a Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen to really carry a team's run game either, you're going to have to be accurate. You're going to have to be able to pick defenses apart, uh, and you need accuracy to be able to do that. Pickett's accuracy definitely dipped this year, especially in the red zone. That's definitely not what you want to see. Then number three on my list, mental processing. So this, this goes into a bunch of different areas here. I think he has a really hard time consistently getting to one to two to three to four all the way across a progression. Uh, it was reported that he had one of the lowest Wonderlick scores in the history of the NFL Combine. And honestly, when you watch him on film, you can kind of see why, man. His downfield vision, he'll miss wide open receivers 20 plus yards down the field. That's not something that you want to see. Uh, and as, as long as a deep pass is, you know, if, it, if there's a deep route that's not his first actual read, the chances of him throwing to that read is pretty much close to zero. Then, another bad thing about his game is that he doesn't really throw over the middle with efficiency. The one thing that I would say over the middle that he actually does okay is he likes to throw seam balls to, like, especially Pat Firemuth. He's actually okay at that. But, like, the inbreakers to George Pickens or Deontay Johnson, lots of times he doesn't see them. And then also, other, when he does see them, he, he tends to overshoot them, like overthrow them, which is just really odd to me. And that goes back to the accuracy issues. And then the final thing that I have a problem with Pickett's game at this point is that he has a really tough time anticipating open windows against zone. So obviously in zone coverage, defenders go out, they're reading the eyes of the quarterback, and there's little pockets of space in every single type of zone coverage. Right, And if, it, because players are so fast on defense in the National Football League, you have to be able to identify that coverage, mental processing, and then you also have to anticipate when the wide receiver is going to be open and throw the football before, uh, be, be, before they actually come open. And Pickett just isn't comfortable doing that. He, he, he beats man coverage a lot better than he does zone. And I think defenses have started to catch up to that, which is why he just hasn't really been successful as a whole this season. So I really do think that these problems that I just listed, those top five issues that I have with his film, go beyond just play calling. It doesn't matter uh, who's calling the plays. Those issues are still going to be present. And unless Kenny Pickett magically changes over a year's time here, I just don't think he can get to the level of a Josh Allen or a Tua Tagovailoa or a Jordan Love, or a Jalen Hurts, where they were able to come into their own three, four years down the line in their NFL journey. So listen, I want to believe in the kid. He, the guy lives and breathes Pittsburgh. He was a Pitt Panther. He's a great kid that works hard. I'm rooting for Kenny Pickett. But as an objective NFL analyst here that watches every single play of film, I just don't think that he is really got what it takes to be a legitimate, uh, definitely star quarterback, but legitimate starter either. But I do think the Steelers being a super loyal organization is going to give him another shot, and I'm worried that that strategy is going to hold this team back yet another season and wait yet, waste yet another year of T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, and Minka Fitzpatrick's prime. So next up on today's show, the only QBs that can replace Kenny Pickett. I got two of them on my list. But before I reveal the first replacement for Kenny Pickett here, go ahead and check out our friends at Game Time right now. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. Uh, you know, personally, guys, I'm somebody that likes to go to events kind of last minute. I'll be sitting here at my office here at Chat Sports, and I'll be like, you know what? I want to go to an NBA basketball game tonight, or I want to go to a concert with Cassie, something like that. Uh, you know, I'll just bring out my, my phone, I'll put up my game time app, which is the only ticketing app on my phone, by the way, 
And I know that it's going to be the lowest price guarantee. And I also know they're probably going to have a flash deal with even lower prices for that event because I'm, I'm a last minute shopper. And that's what Game Time does. It is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. They got a super easy to use interface. And you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Just two taps on your phone, and you can get your tickets sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email to get those tickets. Snag the tickets now without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an, ac uh, an account, and use code STEALERSCHAT, one word, all caps. It's right down there in the bottom right of your screen for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code STEALERSCHAT, one word, all caps. For $20 off, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So now the second option for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the starting quarterback position next year is, if, uh, of course, Mason Rudolph here. And this really would come to fruition if Mason Rudolph plays his butt off in the 2023 postseason here for the NFL season. Okay, so that's essentially what he needs to do. He needs to go into Buffalo and have a really good game in the elements, in the wind, in the cold, come out with a victory, and then probably come out uh, in Baltimore and have another really nice performance on his resume. If he can put together five games of really good football, winning at least four of them, I think the Steelers have to at least consider the possibility of bringing this guy in as their starter and having Kenny Pickett sit behind him for at least another couple of seasons or at least one season. So right now, Mason Rudolph, really good completion percentage, uh, 74.3, just under 200 yards per game passing, but keep in mind, you know, uh, Baltimore was pretty tough to throw because of those conditions. Three touchdowns and no interceptions and the highest quarterback rating out of any passer in the league over the last three weeks with at least 50 pass attempts. Absolutely fantastic. And you know what? Mason Rudolph is somebody that is so easy to root for. And I am rooting for Mason Rudolph because I do think at this point he is a better quarterback then Kenny Pickett. I think he's got an incredible story. I think he's somebody that actually sticks in the pocket with good downfield vision, and he's accurate enough to hit his guys down the field. It's going to be an uphill battle. He's probably going to have to beat the Bills this week. He's going to have to compete against the number one seed in the AFC with probably the MVP of the league on the road in order to secure himself the job. But at this point, it is still possible for him, and I'm definitely rooting for him over these next couple of weeks. Now, before I reveal... Uh, the only quarterback outside of the organization right now that I think Mike Tomlin would bring in to replace uh, Kenny Pickett next year. Do me a favor. Give me a follow on Twitter slash X at Jack underscore Sperry. If you do so, I'll give you a shout out on a future episode of Steelers Talk right here on YouTube. That's where I put all my film analysis because we can't put it here on YouTube. So if you want some more film analysis, you want to learn more about football, all that different kind of stuff, you want to learn more about the Pittsburgh Steelers, do me a favor. Click that uh, or Click that follow button, at Jack underscore Sperry, for a shout-out on next week's show. So the one quarterback that I think Mike Tomlin would actually replace Kenny Pickett with is Chicago Bears quarterback Justin Fields. Now, of course, the Bears have the number one overall pick. They got Caleb Williams in their sights. But it's certainly possible at this point that uh, Justin Fields is still a Chicago Bear by next season. They could trade down, take Marvin Harrison Jr., and keep Justin Fields. It seems like that's what the Chicago Bears fan base wants to do. They love Justin Fields there in the Windy City. But really, man, I know for a fact that Mike Tomlin loves him some Justin Fields. He is his sweet prince. I mean, there's no other way to, uh, to say it. He went to the Ohio State Pro Day back in 2021 when he knew Big Ben Roethlisberger was going to be his quarterback just to watch Justin Fields work out. All right, this guy has the mentality that Tomlin wants in his quarterback, that killer instinct that we saw when he absolutely lit up the Clemson Tigers in that semifinal game his final year at Ohio State. He also has two more years of cheap contract control, which is really the big thing for uh, Mr. Fields here, is that he's affordable. There's a bunch of quarterbacks that the Steelers could maybe get in free agency or via trade, but they would be too expensive, all right? The Steelers' cap situation isn't all that great, and because Justin is still on his rookie contract, he is affordable for this football team. And then the reason why I think Tomlin might make this swing here is because I think Justin Fields has the level of talent that can immediately elevate this roster to a potential title contention type of season as early as next year. And you look at his numbers here over the last three seasons, both as a passer and as a rusher, Start with the passing numbers here. You can see the improvement 
year after year. All right, The interceptions have gone down, the completion percentage has gone up, and so have the yards. What does this mean? This means he is getting better each and every season. And sometimes there are guys like Jordan Love, like we said earlier. Sometimes there are guys like Josh Allen that take a little bit longer to develop as passers. And I do think Justin Fields will eventually get there. But what really makes him special, guys, what could really put this team over the top by next year is his rushing ability. You look at that 2022 stat line there, 160 carries for over 1,100 yards rushing as a quarterback and eight touchdowns. He was the most valuable quarter, uh, most valuable rusher of the football in 2022. More valuable than Christian McCaffrey, more valuable than Josh Jacobs. He was that good as a rusher last season. Now, this year's numbers dipped a little bit, but he, I, he's still super young still has that dynamic element to him. If you get him with the right offensive mind that really takes advantage of his legs and his rushing ability, holy crap, man. This could be a grand slam home run for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And personally, I would be in favor of going and getting him. I understand the reasonings behind not getting him. There are risks involved. But listen, there's risks involved in business. There's risks involved in trying to win Super Bowls. Patrick Mahomes is a big risk for the Kansas City Chiefs when they – uh, eventually uh, traded up to draft him, right? So I do think this is the move that could put the Steelers back in the Super Bowl conversation, and I definitely think this is worth doing if you're Mike Tomlin, if you get the opportunity to do it. So why not some of these other quarterbacks that are being rumored to the Steelers? I don't think it's going to be Baker Mayfield because I think he's going back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after uh, getting them to the playoffs this year. I don't think it's going to be Russell Wilson because uh, I, at this point I would take him over Pickett but I don't think the Steelers would take him over Pickett at this point. I think they like the contract that Pickett has right now, and I, don't, I think they see Russ as a quarterback on the decline, Pickett as a guy maybe on the rise, and then I don't think they're going to go out and get a guy like Michael Penix in the draft because I think the Steelers are trying to win now, and if you try to reset with a new starting quarterback as a rookie, you're pretty much forfeiting any shot that you have at the title next season. And then also, there's a bunch of guys that are being rumored to the Steelers that I'm so sick and tired of seeing these guys on Steelers Twitter being thrown around because they're too expensive. There's just no way the Steelers can afford these guys, and especially the Justin Herbert one. There is no way that new head coach that gets hired there in Los Angeles wants to trade that guy. He's got five years left on his contract. They just locked him up. He's a top five talent. No way in hell Justin Herbert becomes a Pittsburgh Steeler. So, what is the most likely scenario here? So this is what I actually think will end up happening. I think they're going to keep Pickett as the starter for 2024. Will he finish the year as the starter? I probably don't think so, honestly. But then you probably got to cut Mitch Trubisky. I think everyone in Steelers Nation agrees with that. Uh, I think they're going to let Mason Rudolph walk. I don't think they're going to want to bring him back as a backup. He's going to be pretty expensive. And you don't want Rudolph to be behind Pickett's shoulder after the run he went on this year. And then I think that they sign a high-end backup in NFL free agency to kind of be a safety blanket, a plan B, just in case Kenny Pickett doesn't have a Josh Allen or a Jalen Hurts or a Tua Tungavailoa third season in the National Football League. And some of those options that the Steelers have at their disposal, Jacoby Brissett, Sam Darnold, Gardner Minshew, Jake Browning, and Ryan Tannehill are probably the top five names that I would consider, if, especially if you hire Eric Bieniemy as your next offensive coordinator, which I think will happen. Jacoby Brissett would be my number one target. All right, so now let me know down there in the comment section. I've laid it out why I think these three gentlemen right here, one of these guys is going to be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers next year. So let me know which one you think it's going to be. Type KP for Kenny Pickett, MR for Mason Rudolph, or if you want to go out and, and take that big swing for Justin Fields, type JF down there in the comment section. That'll be it for today's show. I know it was a bit of a longer one today, Steelers Nation. Thank you so much for bearing with me throughout this entire video. If you are a real one and you haven't clicked that subscribe button just yet, do me a favor, click that subscribe button and join our Steelers Talk family today.